This video is a tutorial for DaVinci Resolve for the iPad. DaVinci Resolve is a powerful video editor that has been available on the Mac and Windows for a long time, but has recently arrived on the iPad. This is the first of what will be several videos on the app, and is aimed at beginners starting out with this app for the first time. This app is free on the App Store. For a full list of contents of this tutorial, please see the timestamps in the description below. Inside the app is a paid upgrade to DaVinci Resolve Studio, but none of the contents of this video require that paid upgrade. When you open DaVinci Resolve for the first time, you are greeted with an empty workspace. This is divided into numerous sections, many of which will be covered in this video. At the top is a menu with different sections, such as transitions, titles, effects, export, full screen and inspector. Below this on the left is a section where we can import our files for the project and view what we have imported. On the right is the area where we can preview files before we import them, as well as view our project as we're assembling it. Below this are the transport buttons for video playback, as well as various tools. Then below this is our project timeline. This is linear, meaning that the clips and items on the left are at the beginning of the project, and items on the right are at the end. The horizontal playhead tells us where we are in our project. At the bottom of the screen is undo and redo, as well as delete, and two menu items let us switch between cut and color modes. Then in the bottom right corner, we have our home screen icon and the settings icon. Tap or click on the home button in the bottom right corner of the screen. This opens the project manager. From here, we can view past projects, import projects from other places and manage our projects. Projects are displayed as thumbnails with the title underneath. To rename a project, simply tap on the text and you'll be able to change its name. Projects can also be stored in folders. To create a new folder, tap or click on the new folder icon. Give the folder a name and then hit create. To move projects into the folder, tap and hold the file, then drag it over the folder. To delete a folder, right click on it, or long press with your finger. This will bring up a menu that will allow you to rename or delete the folder. The export button will let you export your project as a complete file, letting you edit it on another machine, such as a computer or laptop. Long pressing or right clicking on a project brings up a menu with additional export options including exporting with stills and LUTs, as well as exporting as a project archive. To create a new project, tap New Project in the bottom right corner of this window. A small window will appear asking you to give this project a name. Once you click on Create, the new project will open. Importing media is simple. In the top left pane, you can see a button that says Import Media. If you tap on this, it will open up the Files app, letting you choose the files you wish to import. However, it is possible to import media from the Photos app. Long pressing or right clicking anywhere in this pane will bring up a menu with several options. One of those options is called Import Media from Photos, which will let you get items straight from your photo library. Tap on all of the items you wish to import into this project, and then choose Add. If any items are in iCloud, then you'll need to wait for them to download onto your device before being imported. DaVinci Resolve will download the selected items for you. Files in the Media pane can be organized to help you manage your workflow. When working with a lot of files, this can be useful. 
Long press or right click on any of the files and the menu will appear. Let's choose Clip Attributes. A window will appear showing you details about the video. The last tab at the top says Name. Tap on this and you'll see a box at the top showing the name of the clip. Tap on the text inside to rename the clip. When you finish, tap OK. You'll now see the clip has been renamed. Each item in the media pane can also be assigned a color. The benefit of this is that color will appear on the timeline. This is really helpful when dealing with a large number of clips and you want to allocate a color to specific angles, people or media types. Long press or right click on an item, then choose clip color. A sub menu will appear letting you choose a color. If you want to select multiple files in this pane, you can. Tap or click and hold in the gray area, then drag your selection to choose multiple files. You can then long press or right click on your selection to bring up the same menu as before. This means you can change the clip color for several films at once or perform other actions such as duplicating or removing clips. The timeline is where we can put our files in order to create our project. To create a new timeline, tap or click and hold in the media pane. Then on a menu that appears, choose create new timeline. If you have a keyboard attached to your iPad, you can also use the keyboard shortcut Command N. In the window that appears, you can give your timeline a name and choose the number of video and audio tracks. Another way of creating a timeline is to simply drag one of the items you've imported from the media pane down to the timeline. To adjust your timeline settings, tap or click on the settings icon in the bottom right corner of the screen. There are a lot of settings to explore here, but in this video, which is aimed at beginners, we'll just cover the basics. Timeline resolution lets you choose the size of the video. For example, whether you're editing in 720 or 1080p HD, or in resolutions up to 4K. Underneath this, there is a tick box for use vertical resolution. If you're editing a vertical video, for example, TikTok, Instagram Reels, or YouTube Shorts, you should enable this. You can add clips to your timeline simply by dragging it from the media pane to the timeline. However, you might not want to have the whole clip added. In this case, we can set in and out points, so only a selection of the video is added. Click on your chosen video, then look just above the playback window and you'll see three icons. The middle icon lets you play back the video that's selected in the media pane. Alternatively, you can double tap or double click on the video in the media pane to open it in the same view. You can tap the play button below or hit spacebar on your keyboard to play the video. Notice how underneath the video, there is an outline of the audio waveform with a red playhead that moves across as the video plays. It's in this bar that we can set our in and out points. At the beginning and end of this bar, we have a handle. This handle can be dragged in to the point where you want your clip to start. When you hold down on the handle, the audio zooms in allowing you to make a fine selection for better accuracy. You can do the same thing with the handle at the end to choose where the clip will end. If you have a keyboard attached to your iPad, you can use this to set in and out points as well. For example, whilst the video is playing, you can tap on I on the keyboard to set an in point and then O to set an out point. Now my selection is made, I can tap or click and hold on the video and drag it to my timeline. Only the video in between my in and out points is added. You can
can add multiple layers of content on top of each other in the timeline. If an item is higher up on the timeline, it will appear on top of what is below it. If you're adding an audio file such as music or a voiceover to your timeline, these need to be dragged below all of the other content. If you have a video clip and just want to import the audio from that track and not the video itself, select the video in the media pane and then click the icon below, which is a musical icon with an arrow. With this selected, you can drag the video from the preview window to the timeline as you normally would, but only the audio from this clip will be imported. This works the other way too. You can import just the video without the audio by clicking the video icon next to it to do just that. It's possible to add blank layers in your timeline before you start importing your content. To do this, just tap or click on the plus icon to the top left of the timeline. When dragging an item to the timeline, you'll notice that it snaps in place, usually to align itself with another clip that's already there. This can be really useful, but you may wish to turn this off. If you want to do this, go to the left side of the timeline and look for the magnet icon. Tap this icon to turn it on or off. There are a few ways to navigate the timeline in DaVinci Resolve. If you're using a trackpad or magic keyboard on your iPad, you can use a two finger gesture to swipe left or right to move across the timeline. However, if you aren't using a trackpad and just your hands, you'll notice this isn't possible. Using your finger to swipe across the timeline just allows you to select clips and not navigate across your project. Just above the timeline, you'll see a strip that shows you an overview of all the clips on your project. Swiping across this strip will allow you to scrub through the whole project timeline letting you get to a specific place. You can also tap or click anywhere in this bar to jump to a specific part of the timeline. This navigation strip is incredibly useful in providing an overview of your project and will be one of the features you use the most when working with DaVinci Resolve. Whilst we're here, let's look at the left part of the timeline. Here you can see the numbers of each track along with some functions for each one. The first icon is a padlock. This locks everything on this track in place, so nothing can be moved or edited. Next to this, you have a speaker icon, which will mute all of the audio for that track. Then for video tracks, we have a video icon that will hide the video on that track. Finally, to make your timeline bigger on the screen, tap, hold and drag on the three lines found in the right corner of the timeline. There may be times when you wish to adjust the view of your clip in this project. For example, you may wish to zoom in on a video or crop it. In this part of the video, we're going to explore the inspector as a way of customizing our clips further. Zooming and cropping can be achieved on both video clips and still images. Tap on a clip in your timeline and then in the top left corner of the screen, choose Inspector. The Inspector pane shows a number of different settings for customizing the look of your clips. First of all, we have Transform. This section can be toggled on or off. Zoom will allow you to zoom into the item you have on your timeline. Click the number and then drag it left or right to adjust how zoomed in the image is. Below this is position. Adjusting these numbers will move the image around the screen. The X number moves the image left or right, and the Y number moves it up or down. Rotation angle changes the angle of the footage, moving it in a clockwise or anti-clockwise direction. The next section is called cropping. This lets us crop the image or video clip from the left, right, top or bottom of the image on screen. 
drag the sliders to adjust how much is cropped. Softness adjusts how severe the line is when the image is cropped. When set at zero, it's a clear line between the video and the black part of the frame. When you adjust this, you'll notice that the crop line becomes a fade. Dynamic zoom is a bit like an effect popularly known as the Ken Burns effect. This is where DaVinci Resolve will gradually zoom in or out of an image without you having to automate any parameters. Toggle this on for the selected clip. Then you'll see the image start to zoom in once you tap play. The settings in this section let you decide the speed of the zoom at the beginning and end of the clip. Linear will keep the zoom speed constant, whereas you can choose to ease in and out of the zoom, which gives it a much more natural feel. The swap button lets you switch from zooming in to zooming out or vice versa. Along the top of the inspector window, you'll see different icons. We're currently on the first one, which adjusts the image. Next to this, we have an audio icon. Tapping this brings up settings related to the audio for the selected clip. From this window, we can do things like adjust the volume of the clip or panning, which moves the audio to the left or right. To shorten a clip, tap and hold on the end of the clip and drag it inwards. This will shorten the length of the clip and is something useful to know if you want to add transitions to your project. If you wish to cut the clip midway to create a split, select the clip, then move the playhead to where you want the split to occur. Over on the left of the screen, you'll see a scissors icon. Tap this and it will create a cut. Alternatively, you can tap and hold on the top of the playhead to bring up a small menu. The same scissors icon will appear, allowing you to make a cut in that place too. Transitions allow you to move between two clips smoothly without a sudden change. It also lets you add things like a fade to black at the end of a scene or clip. In the top left corner of the app, you'll see a button that says Transitions. Here is a huge list of transitions available for you to use. If you want to fade out at the end of your clip, you can simply tap and hold Cross Dissolve and drag it over the end of the clip. A square with a cross through it will appear over the clip, showing you how long the transition will be. Let go to add the transition. If you want to change the length of the transition, tap to select it, then tap and hold on the edge and drag it to make it longer or shorter. If you want to delete a transition, Tap it once to select it, then click the delete button in the bottom left corner of the screen or press the backspace key on the keyboard if you have one connected. If you want to add a transition between two clips in the middle of the timeline, there is an extra step you'll need to consider. If you try to drag a transition over two clips, you'll notice nothing will happen. This is because DaVinci Resolve needs some space on each clip to operate the transition. What you'll need to do is shorten each clip to allow the transition to function. Tap on the first clip, then tap and hold near the edge and drag inwards to shorten the clip. Tap the second clip, and then tap and hold near the edge and drag it away from the first clip. You'll see a square appear over the first clip showing you how long the transition will be. Once you've done this, you can add a transition. As before, tap and hold and drag your selected transition over the two clips and it will now be added to your project. Something to bear in mind, some transitions require more of your iPad's resources than simple ones like Cross Dissolve. Therefore, they may stutter or freeze during playback. When your video is exported though, it will play back just fine. Next, let's look at adding a title to our project. 
Next to transitions at the top of the screen, we have a section called titles. Here's a list of possible title templates to add to your project. Tap and hold on one of them and then drag it to the timeline above one of your chosen clips. You'll then see it added and playback will show the style of the title with sample text added as a placeholder. To change the text, including the font and color, select the clip on the timeline, then tap Inspector, found in the top right corner of the screen. In the Inspector window, you'll be able to type what text you want to be displayed. Below this are boxes that let you adjust the font and weighting of the text, its color, size, and other things like the spacing between each letter and line. If the title template you've chosen has more than one text field, you'll find the additional boxes for these further down in this menu. Once you have finished editing your project, you can choose the export option found on the top right of the app to make your video playable in the Photos app or on a video streaming service such as YouTube or Vimeo. Once you choose this, a window appears giving you some options. You can choose between different codecs or choose a setting based on the video service you intend to upload your video to. By default, the video will be exported to the Files app on your iPad. However, if you tap the Share option, you'll have the ability to save it directly to your photo library or to send it to another app. Once you've chosen your option, tap Export to begin this process. That's it for part one of this series on DaVinci Resolve for the iPad. In future videos, I'll be covering things like keyframing, color correction, and more. If there are any specific features you would like to learn next, let me know in the comments below. If you found this video useful, please like and subscribe. If you want to leave a tip, please use the super thanks button here on YouTube, or you can head over to buymeacoffee.com forward slash buzzkill to leave a tip there. PayPal, debit, and credit cards and Apple Pay are all accepted. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. And I'll be back soon with some more iPad tutorials.